It is good to be home. It is good to be back. It takes a lot of faith to come back after a month off. Because you know my philosophy, the first week is all about that physical letting go. (laughs) And let me tell you, there's some letting go. Because people keep, they don't believe you're on vacation, so emails, emails. So you just have to say, stop. It will be okay. Stop looking at email. Week two is all about the psychological letting go, which is harder. Physical letting go happens. Your body starts to rest. But psychological is, are people okay? I'm worried about this person, that person. Is that project going to go okay? Week two, it begins to happen. By week three, you're comatose with vacation love. (laughs) And I want to thank Father Jose, who took hopefully very good care of you while we were away. It was a wonderful, wonderful vacation. To get away is deeply important, and I highly recommend it. I realize that we are in a very privileged place because we get a lot of time off. We need a lot of time off, but we, we, I realize that. Not everybody can afford that. But it is deeply important to get away. Because if you and I don't ever, ever get away, rest is not possible. The worries of our personal lives, our spiritual lives, our world lives are important. But we have no way of being equipped to deal with them if we can gain no perspective. Helping is a wonderful thing. but We have to learn how to help ourselves. Because if we can't help ourselves, we do violence to other people. All right. So end of that. So now to some quick things. Don't worry, it's not going to be too long today. Although I am feeling inspired, but it's not going to be too long today. (laughs) Faith and works, right? So Luther, people say, oh, yeah, Luther really shook the church up. Well, poor Luther was full of anxiety. Prior to shaking the church up, he was shaken up himself. He wanted to do everything right in his life. Is that ever us? Give me the secret formula to life, and I'll follow it perfectly. And then what happens? I get neurotic, right? And hopefully not psychotic, but neurotic. And that's what happened to Luther. We become obsessive-compulsive, and we make it a religion. Luther realized that he had a deep insight. That at a certain time in the church, people were using works trying to buy them way into heaven. Unhealthy. I don't recommend it ever. That was the first insight. And the greatest thing that Luther did for the church was he got us to realize that faith is a gift. It is an absolute gift. But that's part one. Faith opens the door, right? But we have to walk through, right? If we don't believe that our works are informed by nothing. And that's all James is trying to tell us today. He's saying what we believe has to be something that is truly helpful in our lives personally if we are to indeed help other people. And that's why in the gospel Jesus is saying, I've taught you, I've walked with you, I've loved you, so now who do you say that I am? Because many people had expectations for Jesus political, revolutionary, cool dude, whatever. Lots of expectations for Jesus. But he kept breaking out of those things. Simon Peter gets it right. You are the Christ. But shortly after that, what does Jesus do? He says, well, let me tell you about my mission. Let me tell you about discipleship. Discipleship means following me, It comes from a word that means to be teachable. Are we teachable to the ways of God? Because if we're not, we have a little bit of that Peter syndrome. Too much overcare. Ever had someone love you so much, you just go, get off me. I love you, but get off me just a little bit because I need to breathe. Peter loved Jesus to death. He didn't want him to suffer and die. But if he loved him to death, he would have gotten what the mission was all about. To be a disciple of Christ means that you and I have to put to death 
a lot of things that aren't helpful in our life, including our own egos. And I don't know about you, but isn't that hard? It's hard to set aside our ego because I think I have a pretty good idea of how my life should go until I blunder. And today's gospel is just a reminder of that. We can trust Christ. But the only way that that's possible is to have a relationship with Christ. Faith means absolutely, positively nothing if we, can't, if we can't let go of this first principle. We cannot control it. Now, how, no matter how much certainty we seek, we can never control it. Isn't that what, what relationships are all about, husbands and wives, friends? Have you ever tried to control your spouse? Oh, yeah. No head shaking, but I see eyes going back and forth. Of course we have. I'm right. Have you ever tried to control our friends? Have you ever tried to control outcomes with that special person you're hoping to meet? Of course we have. But we have to have a little faith in something greater for things to work out. I don't know how many of you watched the um, uh, Holy Father's wonderful um, interview thing. Did you watch it? Did you know about it? Oh, people of people of God. I'm glad I got back just in time. <laughs> 2020, the Pope was on, right? And he spoke to people in Chicago and in L.A. and in El Paso. Did you watch it? Did you hear about it? Are we waking up now? <laughs> We're about to proclaim a year of favor, so we have to wake up in order to do that. What was the most powerful part of that interview? Kids. But he was with people, and what did he say? When the reporters were trying to get those maneuvering questions that reporters ask, he said, I want this country to know what? I'm with you. I want this country to know what? I'm accompanying you, and I want you to learn how to accompany one another. That's what faith is about, faith and works. We have to have faith and be converted by the higher idea of love. Otherwise, it becomes all about something that we control, romance, political. But it has to be grounded in God because God is love. And our Holy Father did a beautiful job of not just speaking that. But if you watch that interview he was with people. He was going off script. Do you ever go off script? Do you ever allow yourself to go off script? Oh, no. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do this year, right? 50 years of the Newman Center, right? We have a lot of work to do. And we have a lot of work to do together. And I want us to get that into our consciousness right away. The strength of this community and of Catholic communities throughout time is when we can do things together. It doesn't always mean agreeing. We have to rub together to create God. And that's what, we, what we've done here beautifully, and that's what we're going to do over the next 50 years. So, homework, faith and works. Which side are you heavier on? Are you rubbing the genie lamp about saying, okay, how do I get it absolutely positively right, all my practices, and is that it? Or am I too much on the work side of it? Virtue, friends, lies in the middle. There's no wrong or right. It's about faith and works. Let's have a wonderful year of accompanying one another, of growing deeper in our faith academically, but also personally, and we'll have lots of opportunities to practice in our community as well as in the world. It's great to be back. Let's do this together.